Welcome to Your Vote, Your TV's extensive coverage of the 44th general election. Joining me now is Allison Lester, the Liberal candidate for the riding of Northumberland, Peterborough South. Uh, Allison, welcome and thanks for joining us today and taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk about uh, yourself, get the people to know who you are and uh, how the campaign uh, is going thus far. So let's start right at the first uh, and who is Allison Lester? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's really fun to be here. Um, so I am first and foremost born and raised in Coburg, Ontario. Uh, I come, in fact, my father was also born and raised in Coburg, Ontario. I grew up here and uh, went off to university, studied law, uh, became a lawyer, and I practiced for several years in a Toronto firm. And about a decade ago, I was starting to feel like uh, a little disassociated. I felt like I needed to be connected more to a community and I was drawn back to Coburg. So I've been here since 2011 and I've been running my own practice in Coburg and uh, I feel like I've managed to achieve that level of uh, community involvement uh, that I felt was missing when I was in the bigger city. So why bring why come back to Coburg? Why not some other community and and I know I know you said you grew up here so what brought you back, uh, I guess, home rather than somewhere else that you might have been able to go to for the small town living and getting involved more than what you could probably do in a big city like Toronto? It, well, for me, Northumberland County is home. So this is where my family is. Um, and this is where I feel my roots most deeply. My grandparents had a small business here in Coburg. And so it, there really wasn't any other option for me. Um, it just was the place where I wanted to start a family, uh, build a home and a, and a career. I managed to, uh, we had a friend who was a retiring lawyer, so I assumed his practice, which gave me a built-in business when I uh, came back. And then within about a week of moving back to Coburg, I met the man who became my husband. So I think it was meant to be. So let's talk about small town living and uh, and small town Coburg and it's certainly changed since you were a, a child and grew up here to what we are seeing now in Coburg and uh, and in all of Northumberland County. So let's talk about the changes that we've we've seen in or in Coburg and Northumberland County and how you as a uh, the future member of of uh, uh, Northumberland Peterborough so can keep that small town feel to this riding. Yeah, and, and I hear that a lot at the doors, uh, that the communities are changing, and it's not just Coburg, I, you know, it's, it's Brighton and Colburn, uh, Hastings, or it, we're hearing it uh, throughout. And for one, I'm excited. I think we have an opportunity here. People are realizing what a gem this riding is and, and how much it has to offer. So the key will be how to make sure that we grow as communities uh, while maintaining that feeling and making sure that nobody is left behind. So of course, house prices is the one that's on everybody's mind. And that's one of the reasons I was so excited about the Liberal platform with respect to housing and some of the practical solutions that they're bringing in. Uh, there's an answer to be found. And it's just making sure that uh, we don't grow without giving consideration to everybody in this society. Um, whether it's folks who are looking to rent or seniors who are selling their homes and looking to move to the next phase of life. So one of the main things that I would hope to achieve um, if, when I'm elected, would be to uh, make sure that when we look at growth, we're looking at it in a way that includes all members of the community. So before we get too far down the road of uh, uh, where you stand on different topics and such, is this your first foray into politics? And if so, why did you make the jump now? So yes, it is my first foray into politics uh, officially. Um, I, throughout my career though, I have been, um, I mean, I, in my practice of law, I've, I'm an advocate. I've, I've been trained as an advocate. So in a way it's been building to this point. So. Uh, I have been developing the skills throughout my career that uh, will be the ones that are needed in, in a role as Member of Parliament. In terms of actually making the decision, it's something that I've been thinking about for a couple of years. I've had conversations with Kim Rudd about whether when uh, a time came when she might decide not to run, if I would consider doing it, and that kind of got the juices flowing. I also come from a family with a history uh, in the Liberal Party, 
uh, going back to my great grandfather. So it wasn't a huge surprise for my family members when I announced that I was making this move. I was going to ask you what, because a number of things attract a, a candidate to a party. So you being attracted to the liberal, is it something because you grew up in, in that liberal atmosphere, as you stated, uh, your grandfather and such uh, uh, were members of the party and you just followed suit? Or what attracted you to the liberal party to be a member for their party? Well, I think it's it's natural to, to fall into the... Uh, viewpoint of your family members. Certainly I've been raised um, with the values that the Liberal Party represents. There was no, no question in my mind that the Liberal Party was the one I would run for. And it has to do with a couple of things. One, it's the, the progressive nature of the policies that the Liberal Party puts forth. I believe in moving forward for positive change rather than moving backwards, which in my view, the Conservative Party tends to do by rolling it back advances made by the Liberal government. I'm also a firm believer in equality for all, and that is uh, fundamental to the Liberal philosophy as well. So you're out and about and you're knocking on the doors. What are you hearing, Alison, uh, as you're out and about uh, 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 trying to campaign in a time where uh, maybe people don't want uh, individuals at their door or, or uh, candidates at their door because they're still not sure how safe uh, they want, you know, they want to meet people and they want to stay safe. So what are you hearing as you're out and about in the riding of Northumberland, Peterborough South? Well, Certainly, we're uh, following safe practices when we're campaigning, we're always wearing masks and we're standing a distance back. So most people feel quite comfortable. I haven't had anybody who's expressed discomfort with that. Um, obviously, it's something that we thought a lot about and we wouldn't do it if it, we didn't feel it was safe. Um, honestly, most people are saying, oh, you poor thing, can I offer you a glass of water because it's been 30 degree weather the last two weeks. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. We're getting a good response at the door. Um, most people uh, want to talk about, uh, you know, the COVID recovery plan, what's happened, how they felt su supported by the government throughout. So I would say we've had a positive reception. And I have to say it's been the most fun part of the campaign. I'm really, despite the heat, really enjoying going out with my volunteers, meeting folks and having an opportunity to uh, just to introduce myself and, and to say a few quick, quick words. How hard is it, uh, Allison, or how hard has it been thus far in the campaign trail while you're out and about getting people to listen to yourself, listening to what Allison Lester can bring, rather than maybe what uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has done over the last two terms? Because a lot of people refer to, you know, candidates as with the leaders of, of their parties. Uh, um, and so how is how do you try to differentiate yourself from the Prime Minister and get the focus on Alison Lester and what you could bring to uh, to them as your representative in Northumberland, Peterborough South. Yeah, I, I certainly support our leader. Um, I am a Liberal. Justin Trudeau is the leader of the Liberal Party, and I believe that uh, he has shown tremendous leadership throughout the pandemic and, in fact, in the last six years of the campaign. That being said, when September 20th comes, it's my name that's on the ballot. So the most important part of connecting with voters is to ensure that they do connect with me on a personal level. Um, and so I want to make sure that, that uh, they get to know who I am, what my values are, and most importantly, that my role will be to connect the, the people of this riding with investments that are made by the federal government. So I need to hear from them. And that's the message that I'm trying to convey. Tell me what is important to you so that I can then be that connection between the federal government and uh, the people here in Northumberland, Peterborough South. Certainly, being a member of this community, I do know a lot about it, but I, I don't know everything. So unless, I, unless people talk to me and tell me what their issues are, um, I, there's nothing I can do. Um, the one thing I say to people always is that I will not make a promise that I can't keep. So you have my word that if I promise something, I'll deliver it. I'm not going to make a promise unless I know for a fact that it's something that is achievable. As you're a candidate, uh, you're, you're not the incumbent. Philip Lawrence is the incumbent. So 
you're 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 trying you're running on what the liberal government has done during COVID nineteen during this pandemic. How hard is it? And maybe it's not hard. And maybe it's easy for yourself to be able to defend what happened when you weren't what happened or what the Trudeau government did uh, during uh, the pandemic and over the last six years when you weren't there to help guide the 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 future of what has happened in the past. Is it hard to be able to defend him on, on when you're going to knock on the door, seeing you? weren't part of the decisions that were made during the last uh, during the last parliament session well the fact of the matter is i would have been proud to be part of that government um i i have no trouble defending the record of this government because in fact it's spectacular the covid 19 recovery is top in the world uh we have the our vaccination rate is outstanding we acted quickly to deliver uh, supports to, to individuals and to small businesses, not to mention all of the work that happened pre-pandemic. We have uh, real action on climate change. We have the first ever national housing strategy. We have 108 uh, boil water advisories that have been resolved. The, the list goes on and on. The Canada Child Benefit, all of those things. So, in fact, if somebody asks me to defend the, the government's record, I'm quite happy. Uh, you know, I say, how much time do you have? <laughs> because I'm quite happy to go through all of the things that this government has achieved. And I'm also really excited about what the government is uh, proposing uh, moving forward. We're seeing, Allison, at a national level uh, with the campaign leaders or the party leaders, sorry, uh, you know, uh, getting nasty out there, mudslinging. Obviously, we're seeing it more with Prime Minister Trudeau as he tours the country looking for votes or garnering votes for his party. What are you seeing at the local level? Because sometimes uh, it does get uh, dirty and nasty at the local level. What are you seeing early on in the first 14 days of this campaign? So it started on day one. Uh, we had the, the leader of the party here, Justin Trudeau, was in Coburg, and uh, it was we had a, a number of protesters who were there shouting, screaming. It was mostly an anti-vaccination, anti-mask uh, type protest. So from day one, we've seen it. I've also seen it on social media, people making comments to that effect as well. And the thing is, uh, I will support the Liberals' position on vaccination. It's my belief as well. So regardless of the opposition, um, I'm going to continue to encourage everybody to be vaccinated. I believe in the Liberals' uh, mandata mandatory vaccinations for train travel uh, and air flight for vaccine passports. We've seen that not all parties uh, take the same approach to vaccination, and that worries me. Um, so I. I'm really disappointed that we're seeing this level of anger and uh, disruption in Canada. Um, but I think we just have to keep fighting the good fight because vaccination is, is the only way that we're going to see the other end of this pandemic. As a lawyer, and I'm going uh, to maybe put your lawyer hat on for this answer, because I think coming down the line is there's going to be a challenge. Uh, we're starting to see you know, people having to be mandated to, to be fully vaccinated, to be at their job. Do you agree with that? And do you see possibly a challenge coming down the road uh, and a court ruling on on this? Uh, if it's uh, if it's part if if, if uh, businesses can uh, mandate their employees to be fully vaccinated to continue on working at locations or working at their jobs? Well, the fact of the matter is, it's nothing new. I mean, we've all got those yellow cards. Um, I take my son for vaccinations regularly, and of course, I've I've had the full run as well. So, in order to be enrolled in public school, we we have to show that he's had those vaccinations. Similarly, I mean, you've heard, I'm sure, other people make the same uh, comparisons. There are lots of things in life that we have to do. Um, we're not allowed to smoke in restaurants anymore. People were upset when that happened, but it was to, to make sure that the folks around, around everybody were safe. So it's no different than that. And I'm not really sure why it's, it's reached the level of uh, vitriol that we've seen. Um, but in my view, it's, it's perfectly legitimate and in fact important that we mandate vaccinations to keep everybody safe. So obviously, 
taking the role as uh, the Liberal candidate for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Uh, you obviously made the decision uh, with Kim right in mind. And I just wanted to circle back a little bit with Kim because I know that she's being a mentor to yourself during this campaign. And I know the pair of you have a lot of respect for each other where you didn't want to step on uh, Kim's toes uh, uh, if she was looking to run. And I know that uh, Kim, once she knew that you were going to put your name forward, Alice, and that she was more than willing to step back uh, and and, uh, and allow you to be the or allow you to put your name forward. How much has she helped you during this campaign thus far in leading up to the decision to uh, run for the Liberal Party? Well, I think the fact of the matter is, if it wasn't for Kim Rudd, I wouldn't be here. She she certainly we as I said earlier, we had conversations about uh, the possibility of me running. She talked to me a lot about what it would look like. She, uh, of course, has family like me. My, my, uh, she has grown children, but I have a young son. So we talked a lot about what the impact is on family life. That was one of my concerns, of course. Um, and, and unfortunately, Kim was planning to run. It was a fairly uh, close to the election decision that, that she, she decided in the best interests of her and her family, she wouldn't run. And again, yes, she's she's been very supportive. She's my person that I text if I have a question about something. And um, additionally, I have a really strong team supporting me at the campaign office. Um, so between Kim and the folks that I've got behind me, I feel uh, very well supported in this endeavor. We have a couple of minutes left here, Allison, on this week's uh, episode of Your Vote on Your TV. So what is your thoughts or what are you looking to do to achieve in the riding of Northumberland, Peterborough South uh, when elected? So there were a couple of things that uh, really stand out for me. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, my primary goal is to be a good listener um, because if the folks in a certain part of the riding tell me that this is a really important issue to them, then I want to be able to act on that. I, I have some ideas about what I'd like to see happen in the riding, but Maybe, I, maybe that's not what is it actually important to constituents. So I think in order to be a good advocate, I first have to be a good listener. So that's number one. Um, in terms specifically, as I mentioned earlier, I am hearing at the doors a uh, need for housing. So I will want to act fairly quickly to make connections between the riding and the federal government in order to secure funding. Um, for uh, the creation of some affordable housing. I want to also make sure that all young home buyers who are uh, looking to make use of some of the new provisions uh, being proposed by the Liberal government know how to do that. I think that's crucial. And then the last one is um, getting people working again post pandemic. And that's very fundamental because we need to make sure that everybody has meaningful, fulfilling employment. Um, and I'm quite excited about the investments that the government is uh, proposing, particularly in clean technology. So again, it's about making uh, the connection between that, those investments and our riding. Federal government has invested quite a lot in the past in this riding. It can be done. It's just a matter of having the, the right voice at the table to make those things happen.